Hello people, how are you? In this video, we are going to start off with inflammatory bowel disease. Okay. Now, inflammatory bowel disease means inflammation of the bowel. Bowel actually can be intestine. It can be small intestine or large intestine. Okay. So, uh, basically the cause of the inflammation is not known. They usually say it is idiopathic. Okay. Not known. Or uh, sometimes they say it could be genetic or could be micro because of microbes. So, anyways, there is inflammation of the bowel. Okay. We are going to look at the details now. <clears throat> See, basically, um, one second. So, the cause they are saying it could be idiopathic, it could be genetic or sometimes it could be microbes also which cause the inflammation of the bubble. Now, why we should know these diseases? Because first of all, for exam it is important. We should know the Crohn's disease versus ulcerative colitis. We should know. Now, complications are also there. So, as a, a doctor, you should know the complications if you leave it untreated. What can happen? So, there could be malabsorption, obviously, because it's the intestine that is affected. Malabsorption can be there. Fistulas can happen. Strictures can happen. Toxic megacola. And it can also lead to malignancy. So, basically, we should know about Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Now, coming to... Um, these diseases, you know, the Crohn's, these are the two main things that they have given under inflammatory bowel disease. Crohn, Crohn is like crow, see, C-R-O, crow, crow, Crohn's disease. Okay, remember the crow, that is the spelling, C-R-O-H-N, Crohn's disease. Don't write uh, chronic, that is different. This is Crohn's disease, okay, C-R-O-H-N, Crohn's disease. Then you have ulcerative colitis, two things you should know. Where is our happy smiley? Are you happy to know what we are saying now? What are we discussing? We are discussing Crohn's disease versus ulcerative colitis. Very good. Now, basically, uh, this video, we want to focus on the differences between Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. If you draw this diagram in the examiner, very, very good. So, half of the things will be clear just by looking at this diagram. Look at the differences. First of all, we look at the macroscopic features difference. Okay. As you can see, the... Uh, Crohn's disease, there are skip areas. Here it's, okay, small intestine is affected, then large intestine here, then here, then here. So, there are skip areas, okay. So, first of all, what is affected? Let us see the terminal ileum. So, the small uh, intestines parts can be affected. So, the terminal ileum is affected and ascending colon can be affected and there are skip areas. So, here is there, then here, then here. So, there are skip areas in Crohn's disease, whereas in ulcerative colitis, the latter part is only affected. So, the descending colon, correct? The descending colon, the, the rectum, the sigmoid colon, all these can be affected. So, this is mostly a, a send, you know, it is extending upwards. So, that what, that's what you should understand. And here you see that in ulcerative colitis, there is no skip area. But in Crohn's disease, like a crow, right, is jumping from here to here, here to here. It's a uh, skip area is there in Crohn's disease. Did you understand where there are skip areas, baby? Tell me. In Crohn's disease, like a crow, it is skipping. Very good. Okay. So now we are still in the differences in the macroscopic features. See what we are currently looking at. First of all, you see that macroscopic differences we are looking at. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let us look at... Uh, the extent. Usually the extent means the entire thickness okay, of the affected segment. The entire thickness of the affected segment will be involved. Whereas in ulcerative colitis only superficial it will be. okay, And it is confined to mucosal layers. So this is only superficial. So you can see here it is not very dark. Here and there, here and there. It is very superficial. Okay, but This is you know entire uh, thing is affected. It is very thick. Entire thickness of the effect, uh, segment is affected. Okay. Then coming to the ulcers. Here there could be serpiginous ulcers. Let us look at that. Wait. Some specific terms when we want to write. Now let's write them. Serpiginous in Crohn's. Some specific words. Serpiginous ulcers can be there in Crohn's. Okay. Serpiginous ulcers. But in the um, uh, ulcerative there will be, there won't be any fissures. Okay, superficial mucosal uh, ulcers can be there. However, this one as it is, Crohn's is very deep. Na? A serpiginous ulcers will be there. Okay. Then coming to pseudopolyps. Pseudopolyps are mainly seen in the ulcerative colitis. Okay. So, pseudopolyps. Pseudopolyps are present where? In ulcerative 
colitis. Fibrosis is common in Crohn's disease. Fibrosis is common in Crohn's disease and it is rare in ulcerative colitis. Okay. Shortening, there could be shortening of the bubble, shortening due to fibrosis. Due to fibrosis, there can be shortening. Here also there can be shortening but due to contraction of the muscularis layer. So what you should understand here is in ulcerative colitis basically it is affecting superficially. So only the mucosa is affected. Hence the muscularis is contracting. Okay, And hence there is contraction here. The shortening is there but it is due to contraction of the muscularis layer. Okay. So what and all you understood so far in Crohn's disease the macroscopic differences it affects the terminal ileum and the ascending colon there are skip areas then there is uh, uh, serpiginous ulcers so this usually affects the entire uh, okay serpiginous ulcer so basically entire thickness of affected segment so affected segment entire Thickness is affected. Correct? The extent of the inflammation is complete. Okay? There could be serpiginous ulcers. There will be fibrosis. And because of this fibrosis, there will be shortening of the bubble. Okay? Shortening is due to the fibrosis. Now coming to ulcerative colitis, there can be... What and all is affected? First of all, you say what and all is affected? Rectum sigmoid colon and then it extends upwards. Extend upwards means descending colon, correct? And here there will be uh, no skip areas. There are no skip areas and basically it is superficial. So as it is superficial, you can see polyps and um, here the shortening is present and that is because of the contraction of the muscularis layer. Superficial means it is only to the mucosa. Mucosa is affected. Right? What is affected? Mucosal layers are affected. So, did the, you understand the macroscopic differences between Crohn's and ulceratives? Very good. Do one thing. Take rest. Then we will continue with the differences. Okay? Welcome. In the last video, we have looked at the macroscopic differences. Now, we will look at the microscopic differences between Crohn's and ulceratives. Crohn's, remember, Crow, K C R O W, like, like, like that the spelling is, C-R-O-H-N, okay, ulcerative colitis. So, in the last video, we have looked at, uh, we started off with inflammatory bowel disease. And then we saw um, the causes, basically, they don't know why it happens. They are saying it could be genetic or some microbes may cause the inflammation. The complications of these disease, this disease is that it can lead to malabsorption, fistula formation, stricture, toxic megacolon, malignancy, etc. Uh, so we saw the macroscopic differences between Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. If you have not seen the video, please go back and look at the uh, macroscopic differences between Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. <coughs> okay. Basically, see this uh, is uh, late part of uh, small intestine, that is terminal ileum, then ascending colon, right? Uh, and there are skip areas in Crohn's disease. Then there are there is fibrosis because of which there could be shortening. There could be serpiginous ulcer. So serpiginous ulcer has been indicated here, serpiginous ulcer in Crohn's disease. And then um, in ulcerative colitis, basically this is very superficial. Hence, there will be polyps, uh, pseudo polyps can be there. It affects only the mucosal layers. Hence, the muscularis layers can contract and there could be shortening in this also. Okay. So, uh, ulcerative colitis is the last part of the bubble where you have the rectum, the sigmoid colon, then you have the, uh, it extends upwards. So, basically, that those were the macroscopic differences if you have not seen the previous video. And then coming to the uh, microscopic differences between Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. Okay, so basically uh, in Crohn's, what happens? The depth, depth is transmural. Transmural means the entire wall is affected. Okay, so let's just look at this Crohn's uh, uh, photo here that we have drawn. So it is very deep. It's very deep. Okay. Okay. 
the ulcer is very deep. Look at this. This is the ulcerative colitis. Here you can see that the ulcer is very superficial. Right? So depth you understood for uh, Crohn's, the depth is transmural. Okay? Here the type of inflammation you should know. The type of inflammation is a non caseating granuloma and infiltrates of mononuclear cells. Okay? So here you will have this will enlarge this guys. So here you can see the depth, depth is transmural, the entire wall, the granuloma here, they, we have just drawn one granuloma, this is non-caseating granuloma, there is an infiltrate of lot of mononuclear cells, these could be lymphocytes, plasma cells or macrophages. So please note here, lot of mononuclear cells have been drawn, and these could be lymphocytes, plasma cells or macrophages. Then in Crohn's there could be patchy ulceration, so patchy patchy ulceration, okay. What happens to submucosa? It is widened due to edema and lymphoid aggregates. So you can see lymphoid aggregates here in the submucosa. So they are widened. The submucosa is widened. What happens to the muscularis? Again, there are infl inflammatory cells. Okay. And fibrosis is present, not drawn here. Okay. So the differences in Crohn's uh, microscopy. Okay. Can you see? Uh, the depth is transmural. Transmural. Say transmural. Transmural. Non-caseating granuloma. 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 Then uh, mononuclear. Mononuclear. Cells. Cells. Mucosa. Mucosa. Patchy. Patchy. Ulceration. Ulceration. Submucosa. Submucosa. Widened. Widened. Because of edema. Because of edema. Edema. Lymphoid aggregate. Lymphoid. Lymphoid and aggregate. Lymphoid. Muscularis. Muscularis. Inflammatory cells. Inflammatory cells. Fibrosis present. Fibrosis present. Right. Now let us look at the microscopic differences between uh, in ulcerative colitis. Okay, so the depth. Depth is mucosal and submucosal. Say mucosal. Mucosal and submucosal. Say near the mic. Mucosal and submucosal. Sub okay. Okay, the type of inflammation. Say crypt abscess. Crypt abscess. And there is, uh, there are chronic inflammatory Chronic inflammatory cells. Cells, okay. Okay, very good. Then the mucosa is hemorrhagic. Say mucosa is hemorrhagic. Mucosa is hemorrhagic. With ulceration. With ulceration. Submucosa is normal. Submucosa is normal or, or reduced in width. width. Muscularis is usually spared. Muscularis is usually spared except in the cases of toxic, toxic megacolon. Okay, and then uh, fibrosis is anyways absent. So look at the diagram here. So in ulcerative colitis, what and all we saw? Mucosa, there is hemorrhage, ulceration. Submucosa is normal or it could be reduced in the width. Muscularis is usually spared except if, if it has become toxic megacolon. Fibrosis is absent. Here there is crypt abscess. In ulcerative colitis, there is crypt abscess. And in um, Crohn's disease, there is non-caseating granuloma. Can you say non-caseating? Non. Non-caseating. Caseating. Granuloma. Granuloma. In Crohn's. In Crohn's. Very good. Thank you. Okay, so that is what we have seen, the microscopic differences between Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. Let us meet in the next video to continue on the immunologic features and complications. So guys, we are looking at the differences uh, between Crohn's disease uh, and ulcerative colitis, correct? So we looked at the uh, causes, the complications. Then we looked at the macroscopic differences between Crohn's and ulcerative. Then we saw the microscopic differences. Microscopic differences between Crohn's and uh, ulcerative colitis. So, hope you have understood. Then we move, now let us move on to the immunologic differences. So, immunologic differences you should know here. 
that the lymphocytes which are in Crohn's disease are the T helper 1 and in ulcerative colitis T helper 2 cells. So it is very easy right 1 and 2. And coming to the cytokines here you have the gamma, here you have the INF gamma, interferon gamma, the tumor necrosis factor and interleukin 12. Here you have 13, interleukin 13, not difficult right, 12 here, 13 here, transforming growth factor beta is here. Okay, if you want you can remember the easy ones, here you have interleukin 12, here you have interleukin 13. What about this ANCA antibodies, ANCA P antibodies, here there are, here it is more positive, okay. Positive in most, the antibodies, ANCA P antibodies are positive mostly in ulcerative colitis. Okay, so what do you mean by ANCA? ANCA means anti-neutrophil cytoplasmic antibody. So these are cytoplasmic antibodies. Okay, anti-neutrophil cytoplasmic antibodies. P means perinuclear. Okay, so these stain the material around the nucleus of a neutrophil. Okay, so these stain the material around the nucleus of a neutrophil. Where did we actually see lot of neutrophils? Yes, we saw lot of neutrophils in the ulcerative colitis. So no wonder this ANCA P antibodies are more positive mostly in ulcerative colitis. Okay. So here you can see they are anti-neutrophils. So neutrophils are more in ulcerative colitis. Hence we can say it is positive mostly in ulcerative colitis. Most um, positive in most. Okay. Ulcerative colitis. Time to move on guys to the complications of uh, Crohn's versus ulcerative. Let us look at the Crohn's complications. Crohn's complications basically there will be fistula. Why? Because the entire wall is involved. Correct? So transmural it is. So as the entire wall it is involved. As the entire segment the extent is complete. So fistulas are very common or it is in 10% of the cases there can be fistula in Crohn's disease. In ulcerative colitis it is rare. Now malignant changes are uh, there, rare in Crohn's but in ulcerative colitis if the disease is more than 10 years. So basically they come, if it is malignancy then what happens? In Crohn's it is lymphomas mostly and in ulcerative colitis it is carcinomas mostly. Okay, C and C don't go together here. So Crohn's, lymphoma, ulcerative colitis, carcinoma. Okay, uh, are you able to understand this? Wake up. What did you understand so far? Malignancies, which one is common in what? In uh, uh, Crohn's, it's lymphoma. In ulcerative colitis, it is carcinoma. Correct. Correct. Okay. Coming to fibrous strictures, definitely fi fibrous strictures will be common in Crohn's because there is fibrosis in Crohn's. Correct. Crohn's will have fibrosis, ulcerative colitis, no fibrosis. So fibrous strictures will be more in Crohn's. So that completes the differences between um, Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. Fine.